BBC Eye has live coverage of Wales v Germany and Northern Ireland against Spain. Press red now for those. While here on BBC One, if your heart can take it, England's less chance. Good evening and welcome to Wembley for England's European Championship qualifier against Croatia. It's been a little precarious at times, but this game was always going to count. We're looking for a, an English performance, a performance of pride, passion, attitude, character. character. That glaring chance felt to me and it should have been taken. It's got real here for Steve McLaren for the first time. Croatia have never lost a home qualifier. Robinson is beaten! Oh, Robinson, it's the worst goal that you will ever see England concede. And the England supporters have every reason to feel absolutely furious. It is a must-win game for England, it really is. Nothing less than three points will suffice here. And there's a chance for the first goal, it's there! It's almost like old times. Ah, Rio Ferdinand! It's not often you get an enjoyable game with England. A win, and England qualified today. And here's Rooney! Oh, what a goal! Wayne Rooney has conceded the penalty. He was outside the penalty area. And England are behind in a game they must not lose. I'm just sick because we had it, and it's been taken away. Taken away, taken away. England start to break this crucial game in England's group in the race for Euro 2008. Here's a real chance, and Israel have taken the lead. A great chance for Billy Dino, and he scored the equaliser. And he's hit the post. The agony as well for England fans at home, but oh, as well coming oh, forward. It's a great oh, chance to win it, and they have. It felt like how I was when I was a fan, difficult to watch. It was unbelievable. The heart in the mouth stuff. The controls back in our hands, and we need to deliver on the pitch. Judging by the twists and turns of this qualification campaign, a packed Wembley Stadium could well be in for a tense evening. It may have been somewhat through the back door, but as I'm sure you already know, a draw or better against Croatia, and we'll have something to look forward to next summer. A win by 2-0 or better, and England would actually top the group. Here to offer words of comfort, or possibly not, Alan Hansen, Alan Shearer... <laughs> And Ian Wright, um, that was an excruciating watch, Israel-Russia. It was an amazing game because obviously Israel scored first, the Russians equalised, and the, the Russians were in total control of that match, and England were praying for a draw then. I mean, you can see the, the clock here, it's 89 minutes and 17 seconds, and you think this is in, and it's all over. Hits the post, goes wide, and then look at the clock again. About 30 seconds later, the ball whizzes at nine, 90 minutes and 6 seconds, it whizzes across the goal. That could have gone in. The Israelis got the pitch and score, and it gives England a lifeline. Uh, England have got that reprieve, Alan. The, the important thing is to make the most of the slice of luck when you get it. Being given a chance, now you've got to take it, and that's vitally important. And anyone that's ever heard any player in football say the dividing line between success and failure is so small, that's what mm. we mean. The width of a post is so small, because if that had gone in, different story. But, as I said, we've got a chance, we've got to take it. The pitch out there is, is, is pretty awful with all the, the rain we've had, but um, it should be a great evening. I'm very confident tonight. Ian, how have England got to go about this game tonight? Well, I think we've got to be positive. Everybody's talking about the one up front and you know trying to support him while we're playing defensively. I don't think we are. I think we've got players who have been given the licence to go and attack and, and support Peter Crouch as much as they can. And I think if they do that, I think that it won't be a problem. I think we'll get many players up in their box. A draw would suffice, but you don't want to play for a draw. You don't want to have it 10, 15 minutes to go where it's nil-nil and everybody gets on edge. I think, like Ian said, you've got to be positive. Go and finish them off. I mean, England, all right, they're without Rooney and Owen, but they've still got enough firepower there to finish the Croatians off. 
Well, Alan, of course, mentioned uh, the state of the surface just a few minutes ago. It's been raining in London over the last hour or so, and you can see that the, the, the pitch is pretty waterlogged. Um, I don't know whether the game's in danger of being called off. Perhaps they should call it off and uh, call it a draw. <laughs> call it a draw. <laughs> we all go home early. <laughs> it's great for the England goalkeeper, isn't it? You know, one mistake and you're out, and inexperienced back four in front of them, and then you've got to play in that. Yeah. And, uh, does that, just... that favour either of the two sides? Um... I don't Making think it does. I just, you, I think you've just got to get out there and, and give it what you've got. And you're loving it as a forward. As a centre forward, you're in there. You're trying to pick up the pieces off uh, of off both goalkeepers. It'll be a tricky night for them. Well, yeah, that's right. It's a defender's nightmare. Yeah. You know, the ball's skidding about there. Easy to make a mistake for centre backs or the goalkeeper. That's what you get when you let that American <laughs> football on your surface. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. All the pitches we've got as well. <laughs> this, of course, is uh, not a unique situation for England. Qualification almost invariably comes down to the final group game. And by and large, it turns out OK. And England getting home with a smack of wood. Minica! Oh, yes! It's there for England! For David Beckham to repeat that feat this evening, of course, he'll have to come off the bench. Uh, at this stage, it's very important for us not to be complacent, so we should probably remind you that there was one famous occasion here at Wembley where it went a bit Pete Tong. Win or bust, the atmosphere here at Wembley, arguably more gripping than at the 1966 World Cup final. Purgatory. I remember it ever so well. And the interesting thing, of course, is that that result would do for England tonight. On that occasion, they had to win. Sir Alf Ramsey, who'd already won the World Cup for England, lost his job. I don't know what chance Steve McLaren will get. Well, the other thing is, Al, as Al was quite rightly pointed out, it's a thin dividing line between success and failure because yeah. in goals that night for uh, Poland, Tosh Eschi had an unbelievable game, and Chilton, who was the best goalkeeper you've ever yeah. seen, made the mistake. So. You know, anything can happen, but as I say, the most important thing for England is to be positive here. Go out and get after them and finish the game off. Are you, are you old enough to remember that, Shearer? No, I was just going to let Hanson talk about that, 1973. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was only three then. Uh, right, here. I was it. ten. I remember it. I couldn't understand why everybody was so upset. I thought England were brilliant on the day, but we just didn't win. <laughs> That's, not, that's how I saw it, you know what I mean? But like, I just remember trying to pronounce Tomaszewski's name all the yeah. time when we went to school the next Got it now. Well, you did better than me. Well, I know it now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's hear from um, England's reprieve manager, Steve McLaren, spoke to Ray Stubbs just a few minutes ago. Steve, first things first, all the best to you and your players. You picked Scott Carson in goal. You were rock solid in support of Paul Robinson. What changed? Um, I think yeah, just events, um, things that happened in previous games. But also Scott Carson, we had high hopes for him at the beginning of the season. Um, his form's very good. We feel it's just the right decision. Paul doesn't even make the bench. Is it the situation you feel he's not in the right frame of mind given he's been dropped? Um, again, just we feel it's the right thing to do and take him out of the heat completely. We've said to him he's, he's coming back to form with Spurs just of, of late. And um, he's got a future with England, no problem with that. What decided you about leaving David Beckham on the bench? I think we're playing um, sort of a 4-3-3 uh, with Peter Crouch up and we just needed pace on the flanks and I think Sean Wright Phillips provides us with that and Joe Cole on the other side. They're used to it, they play like that with Chelsea and Sean Wright Phillips is really the last three games 
at Wembley has not let England down. If you need anyone to come off the bench and score a free kick, uh, as what happened in 2001, no better person. Absolutely. We've said it's important, uh, not just the, the 11 that start, but also the subs, because it's going to be a 90, 95-minute game. And it's going to go right to the wire, right to the end. And we need players coming off that bench who can give us an impact. How do you want your team to play? Will Steven Gerrard support Peter Crouch? Will you try and get as many people uh, as possible forward? As many people as possible as we can. Um, I think we've got that with Frank and Stevie G from midfield. I think we've got that from the flanks with Sean Wright Phillips and Joe Cole. And that's what we're looking to do. And we're looking to play football. We're looking to be aggressive. We're looking to take the game to Croatia. We're looking to play in their half, high tempo, get about them. You've seen the conditions. They're going to be difficult. And so they're going to be tiring and sapping. So subs are going to be very, very important. How do you describe the mood? Surely there must be a few nerves around. Yeah, I think it's steely resolve. I think it's... They know, we, you know, they know they've got the opportunity. There's, they know there's no excuses now. We have to go out, cross that white line, do the job, make sure we qualify. You're about to give the most important team talk of your career... What will be at the heart of what you say? I think attitude and uh, whatever it takes to win. Um, and the game's over 95 minutes. And we've got the will, we've got the energy, we've got the fitness. We've got to make that count. All the very best to you. Good luck. Thanks very much. Cheers. This is the team that Steve McLaren has selected this evening, whether it be a 4-3-3, as he described it, or a 4-5-1. I guess events throughout the night will... Um, We'll see. What do you think, Alan? Well, it can be very flexible. You know, you've got Crouch up there as an isolated front man, but the most important thing about that is, is getting people to support him. You've got four attacking midfield players there, with Barry just sitting in the hole protecting the back four. Now, I've seen Gerard play just off Crouch a number of times at Anfield, and he does it very, very well. So the most important thing is, is getting the balance between defence and attack with that selection. Uh, one or two big decisions he's had to make, um, Alan, the... Scott Carson won, he's left out Robinson. Yeah. Would you go along with that? I would, I would, I really would. I mean, it, I don't think it's the end for Paul Robinson by any means. I, th I still think he's a very, very good goalkeeper, but he's having a bad time and there's no hiding, or getting away from that. He's, he's made um, mistakes that have cost England goals and cost England games, and I think it's the right decision to take him out of the firing line. Um, he had a choice between Carson and, and David James, and... Um, Although he didn't have a great amount to do in his debut against Austria, what he had to do, he, he'd done very well. So, I mean, what a huge night for him. What a mm. huge night. It's oh, just Tricky incredible. conditions as well, Ian. I mean, well, it's a brave decision, but managers have to make them. It is a brave decision, and it was one that I, I couldn't see. I didn't see it coming, especially in such a big game. You take Sol Campbell out of that equation, you're looking at a, a very inexperienced back four, a very important department for, for England tonight. So... You know, he must have so much confidence in Scott Carson. You know, the way you see him, even just diving about there, he looks like he's, he's up for it. So, you know what I mean? Good luck to him. If he comes through this test in this big game and does well, then, you know, we're looking maybe at a new number one for a while. You sniggered a bit, Hanson. You think it's a bit tricky for him tonight? Uh, well, I just think the conditions are abysmal for a goalkeeper in a game of this magnitude. And it's, like Al says, it's a massive test for the boy. 22 years of age, yeah. you know, one mistake and you're out. Uh, the European Championships, but the other thing is that you know he could become a hero. Exactly. He'd still hero. be saying the same thing about Paul Robinson if he was playing. Cut the yeah. conditions. Yeah. What a nightmare for him yeah. tonight. Yeah. He can't afford yeah. to make any okay. mistakes. It's uh, in front of him, as um, you both pointed out, have the experience of Sol Campbell. Yeah. It's Sol been a terrific campaign for England over a number of years, and he'll be needed tonight. Mm. He's a huge player, and he's... Um, he is huge, he's uh, massive. I mean, he, he <laughs> he's, he's six feet away. <laughs> Ferdinand and Terry are out, and um, when, he's, when he's came and he's, he's done a, a great job, and he, I don't think he'll let anyone down. He's mm. an experienced campaigner, as Wright, he said before, he's, he's certainly the most experienced in, in that back four, and he'll, he'll be well needed tonight. I think he's had a great season mm. in Portsmouth as well. You know, vastly experienced. Against uh, the Russians, I thought he was absolutely magnificent. This is a header under pressure. Brilliant. Brilliant. Again, time and time. He just reads it, comes across here. We circle him there. It's just brilliant reading the game to get across there. And every time you see him play, it's the interceptions. Uh, time to perfection, that was in a vital area. Because if he gets that wrong, it's a penalty kick. And then positionally, the last one coming up, is he gets in a great position here. He knows Looking. exactly where the opposition, opposition are, and the ball is fantastic. But the, he's had a great, as I say, it's a great season. The common denominator in every one of those clips 
is the, the defending deep. Yeah, that's, that's Peter Crouch. There. My, my one concern about this side is that there's uh, no threat behind the Croatian yeah. defence. Peter yeah. Crouch very slow, no pace. They've got to get players beyond. Well, I've, I've played in, in the position that he's played tonight many times, and you've hit the nail on the head there. It's all right getting people up to support him. People have actually got to run beyond him yeah. and stretch the teams. Otherwise, I think England will, will have a difficult night. Yes, he's got to hold the ball up, which he can do. Yes, he'll have to flick it on at times to, to bring other people into the game. But another big onus is on Gerard, is on Lampard, is on Sean Wright. Otherwise, Croatia know there's no threat yeah. behind them. They can play Let's very high. Squeeze it in. The only, the only thing against that is the state of the pitch. Like It's very, very difficult yeah. to play in behind and keep it in that area because it's going to skid away from you. You know, if they get it into his feet and, like they say, get the support run about them, then they can cause problems. I think, that's what I think Croatia will do that as well because they'll be saying that if, if they don't get their support in quick enough, if you, after his first touch, they'll be right on him. So he's going to have to really do. A, a, he's going to have to really hold the ball up well tonight. I read your column this morning, righty. What did I say? You said that David Beckham should play instead of Sean Wright. Well, the thing about it is, if I'm going to be totally honest, what I was thinking on on the. Did I didn't, you get a phone call from him this morning. I didn't, but I haven't. I haven't spoken to him for two days. <laughs> He'll never um, speak to you again. To, I, don't I, don't I don't think so. Hopefully, he does well tonight, and we can just. So McLaren's got it wrong picking your boy. Ah, uh, it's tomorrow's chip paper. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and hopefully he won't have read it because I told Whatever him. Never happened to nepotism. Never, never read the papers on the day of a game. And I'm hoping he didn't. The thing about it is, is that we're thinking we've got a six foot nine striker. We've got a guy who's arguably one of the greatest crosses that we've ever produced. And I thought that um, that might have swayed it for him. But I am delighted for Sean. He's played. He's got in there on merit, like Steve McLaren. Even like though Mac you don't think said. he's good enough. Well, you like Mac. Because <laughs> like, you call him Stevie G Mac. He said that he's on in there on merit. He's he definitely uh, shouldn't no be playing, there. right, Phillips? He shouldn't, he shouldn't. I think no be, way he should have played. I think one of the reasons that he is playing is because of Peter Crouch up there on his own. He mm -hmm. is a, he is another player that can actually get beyond him and run yeah. past Peter Crouch with his pace. So but he's got this great understanding with the right back as well. You know, when the right back who tends to get forward, Sean Phillips. Absolutely. Yeah, and and the energy and the pace to get Fantastically yeah. well, by the way, yeah. in England games yeah. recently. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Got to remember here that Croatia are actually very strong outfit. They're top of the group, yeah. three points clear of England. Um, it's, a, it's a jolly up walk really at Wembley. The best thing about it is that we've we've got bad weather for them, so they might not want to come and show us their greatest skills. And that I'm hoping that anyway. I would be far far more worried if England had to go to Croatia. I know Croatia are qualified, and, and people can say, well, they can take the foot off the gas, and well, maybe so. But they're not on their home patch, which I think. A couple of familiar yeah. faces. Uh, three players in the. Premiership, Eduardo, Cranchar, and of course, Cor Luca. Cranchar is the one I'm afraid of, really. Of course, like Eduardo, I haven't seen enough of him playing. He's obviously a good goal scorer, but Cranchar is having a good season at Portsmouth, and he's a quality footballer. Very good technically. They'll keep a hold of the ball well, and they'll use the ball well. The most important, the biggest aspect for England is to get after them early. Mm. You know, high tempo, get in about them, and... Like you've said, they've already qualified. Let them know they're in for, Let them know they're exactly, in for a yeah. big game. A word now from England's captain, part of the five-man midfield. Stephen Gerrard has been talking to Ray. In Moscow, we are discussing a chance that just went wide. Gloom and doom on the night. And now what a difference in mood. Yeah, of course. I mean, from the you know after the Russia game, uh, the mood and you know it's been it's been difficult being an England player, you know, facing interviews. But now the control's back in our hands, and we we need to deliver on the pitch on Wednesday. And I think enough's being said in the build-up to this get-together. Now it's time for the players to do the talking on the pitch. Big debate about the formation four-five-one. How will that affect your role? Well, obviously, I'll have to adapt slightly. Um, but I think formations and systems, it's just all gossip before the game, really. And the players will be prepared. We've worked on it for the you know, the last couple of days, and your critics will say it's quite a negative formation, but you can also look at it as a 4-3-3 formation, and you're playing with three forwards. So we've got to be organised and hard to beat defensively, but you know, when we're going forward, yeah, you've got to take the shuttles off and get up and support. The big man, you know, he's he's learning and he, he's improving his game all the time, and his record for England's fantastic. Um, and he's desperate to do well at this level. How are you enjoying the responsibility of leading England? Yeah, I'm loving it. I mean, you know, obviously, I'd love to have John leading us out. He's a big player for us, and he's our real leader. But you know, I'm enjoying the responsibility. I've done it for Liverpool for more than five years now in big games and on big nights. So you play well on the pitch, and hopefully others will follow around you. Yeah, obviously, I'll. 
say a few things in the dressing room, but for me the most important thing is to do my talking on the pitch and hopefully that will give other players around me a lift. Talk about captain's performances. Remember David Beckham at Old Trafford against Greece? Yeah, I'd set up for that on Wednesday. Um, you know, it was Roy the Rovers stuff from David that day. You know, he was fantastic. Um, but, you know, I'd, I'd take three points now and just a, a normal performance. It's all about the results. This is big time. How do you keep calm? It is big time, but as a player, these are the games you want to play in. This is where I get me, you know, me buzzers from big games for Liverpool and big games for England. And, you know, it's getting close now. I'm looking forward to kick off and that's what you want. You want the responsibility of having to deliver for the whole country in big games and that's what gives me a buzz. Big player for England uh, today. What do you think it'll suit him and Lampard, that system with Barry playing as the holding player? They perhaps can work together <clears> this way. I hope so. You know, they've got the quality to do it. They've got the, the insurance with Gareth Barry, so I can't see why not. He's used to playing that with Peter Crouch, supporting Peter Crouch, so I can't see how when a player of his quality is not going to take, the advi take advantage of the situation. I think the question marks have always been asked in a four-man midfield yeah. of, of whether uh, Gerrard and Lampard can play together. I think this system should actually suit them. Yeah. They don't have to worry about too much what's behind them because Gareth Barry's behind them. And they both like bombing on and getting past um, uh, Peter Before, Crouch. Yeah. So it, it, should, it should actually suit them tonight. The other thing is, of course, that the two of them are playing really well for the clubs. Which, you yeah. know, Gerard was Before. going through a lean patch and Lampard was going through a lean <clears throat> I think this is a night. It's big heart, strong minds, high tempo. Be scared of one thing and one thing only, and that's failure. Go and get them finished long before the last 15 minutes because I'm telling you if it's if it's a draw with 15 minutes no, to go we don't want that. <laughs> everybody will be so edgy whoa, whoa I'll come back truth. from negative town man we going to I'm negative town <laughs> England, England are going to win okay I'm just saying be wary okay we don't want to keep this to go <laughs> I thought you were taking stand a, it in the studio yeah, I thought taking a left turn to negative town man you better come back baby <laughs> Are you are you in positive town I'm, oh, in, yeah. I'm in a positive mood we've been given a chance let's make the most of it <laughs> Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So the, the, the final rally call there, just before they go out in, what will it be for you? Well, I think that, like, um, like we say, it's in our own hands now and we have got the opportunity to beat a team who have already qualified. I think what we should do is go out there and play at a good tempo. What's going to make them say, oh, we're already there, let's just have a nice night here tonight. And hopefully the boys will just ram it down their throats all day long. It's not often in football where another team gives you something. Israel gave us something on Saturday. We've got to take it now. I love Israel. I'm going to be really positive here. I Ooh. think England, England will win, and I think they'll win comfortably. We'll get on quick for a change. <laughs> uh, OK, so it's England versus Croatia. The stakes are high. Don't forget, if you've got high definition, to switch to the BBC HD channel. Your commentators here at Wembley tonight are Mark Lawrenson and John Motson. Thank you, Gary. Along with 86,000 or more inside the stadium, those who haven't arrived yet, there may be some empty seats, that's because there's a lot of congestion outside, but this match has to start on time by UEFA rules. And it wouldn't be England, would it, if it didn't go right to the wire? You drew a comparison in the studio earlier with Poland in 1973. I had the unenviable job that night of interviewing Alf Ramsey after the game. I just hope it's a more comfortable scenario for Ray Stubbs when he talks to Steve McLaren in just over two hours' time. But having said that, England's record since then, when the chips are down, has been remarkably good. Eight of their previous nine attempts to qualify for a championship have gone to their last match in the group, and on seven of those occasions, England have got the result that they needed. So uh, the only exception being when they failed to qualify for the 1994 World Cup. There have been some hair-raising moments, and uh, we heard David Beckham's free kick referred to several times. Lenica's volley in Poznan, some heroic displays like Glenn Hoddle's team holding Italy in Rome. Peter Shilton in Poland in 1989, without which there would have been no Italian 90 for Bobby Robson and no tears from Gaza. So the list goes on, and uh, it may just be that we're in for another one of those cliffhangers tonight. We shall see. Now, down there in the tunnel, as well as the team coming out, the... Uh, the star names missing tonight have been in the dressing room. Ferdinand, Terry, Owen and Rooney. But just now, what a different reception England would have got had Israel not beaten Russia on Saturday night. As it is, what could have been a very awkward night at Wembley becomes an optimistic one, as you'll hear.
Ascot's in front there. One of them uh, sponsors nationwide have found a lad from Buckinghamshire, Finlay Fulford, whose grandfather played for England 90 years ago. There's a bit of history attached to that lineup. But here come the officials. His Royal Highness Prince William, the president of the Football Association, being accompanied by Jeff Thompson, the FA chairman, along with uh, the other officers from the two football associations. And they need their umbrellas because it's absolutely teeming here. National anthems to be sung by Tony Henry. Three, two, one. respect that got because it, their anthem was badly treated in Macedonia on Saturday. there you can see for yourselves and as the officials come out to meet the teams Mark Lawrence and the first question I'm going to put to you tonight is about the pitch because Slavin Bilic was well to say the least critical about it last night and Steve McLaren's staff are none too pleased with it either I can tell you well I think John you've got to go back some three and a half weeks to the game of American football that was played on here I think that was our exper experimental I don't think it will ever be done again certainly not in the month of October because of the weather we get in this country. That apart, it's just something that England have to deal with. It's the same for both teams. Get on with it. You can always go on about the pitch later on. Don't forget the last pitch they played on in a major international game was actually a plastic pitch. It was, and I have to also say it's a much better surface than the one Croatia played on in Macedonia in Skopje on Saturday night. That pitch was virtually unplayable. The ball would not move properly, and Croatia in the second half, once they knew they'd, they'd qualified, really frankly they went through the motions and lost 2-0 but it was worse than this even I can tell you but this is bad enough and there are concerns surely here about the pitch at the new Wembley well there are but uh, I mean that's up for the FA and the people of Wembley to be sorted I think just the thing for England tonight is to get through this game and ensure qualification well we have underlined the fact that England could win the group still but let's put qualification as the first priority now then the uh, inexperience of Carson, Richards, Lescott and Wright Phillips means more responsibility for seasoned internationals like Sol Campbell winning his 73rd cap, Captain Steven Gerrard his 63rd, Frank Lampard reaches the 60 mark tonight with 13 goals, two of them against Croatia, one on his England debut and one in Euro 2004. Three Premier League regulars, as Gary said, in the Croatia starting lineup. Right back, Vedran Shawluka, part of the Ericsson revival at Manchester City. 
on the left side of midfield, Nico Cranshaw of Portsmouth. And from the leader's arsenal, number 22, Eduardo da Silva, Brazilian-born, but scorer of 10 goals in the qualifiers, including the first against England in Zagreb last year. The Kovac brothers of 143 caps between them, defenders Dario Simic and Josip Simunic, were both sent off by Graham Pohl against Australia in the World Cup, the latter after being shown the now infamous three yellow cards. As for the substitutes, Steve McLaren had to choose people who might need to close out the game, like Wes Brown and Owen Hargreaves, who might be required to change the game, like David Beckham, who hasn't started on the bench for England since the 1998 World Cup, or players who might be called upon to save or win the game, like Jermaine Defoe and Darren Bent, who between them have started only five Premier League games for Tottenham this season. What a responsibility, Mark Lawrenson, for this young man. Well, not only him, John, as well. I mean, if you, if you look, you take Campbell out of England's back four and, and Briggs, Lescott, Richards and Carson, 40 caps between them. 40 caps only. You just said about the Kovacs brothers for Croatia. 143. Big difference. It is no Gary Neville, no John Terry, no Rio Ferdinand, no Ashley Cole. And a new goalkeeper. That's the setup. Now the referee tonight is Peter Freudfeld from Sweden and he has his compatriots on the line. England are wearing all white and will play in the first half from left to right in this critical European Championship qualifier. A draw or a win will do. Defeat, if Russia win in Andorra tonight, means England are out. And just having a look straight away, it'll be... Olic up front with Eduardo for uh, Croatia. And Steve McLaren needs the shelter, perhaps in more ways than one. Yeah, rather pensive looking Steve McLaren as well. But also, just keeping an eye on Northern Ireland tonight, it would be something of a miracle if they were to get through. It's 0 0 in Spain at the moment for them, and Sweden and Latvia are 1 1. So Latvia are doing their bit at the moment for the Irish. You can see Northern Ireland by pressing the red button. But uh, if you're sticking with us, I hope you are, it's going to be some night here. This is Slaven Bilic, well known to supporters of West Ham and Everton. Was in the Croatia team that uh, went to the 1998 World Cup semi-final. In fact, they finished third in 98. And he also played here when they played their first international at Wembley in 96, when Terry Venables was the England coach. Force something straight away with Rock Phillips. Wearing 10. Seven is Barry. Croatia have uh, snapped that up pretty cleanly. It was Cernar, the number 11, who got it away. Chorluka. Cernar really plays right side midfield. That's where he is now. Chorluka, as you know, is a bit of a buccaneer when he comes forward. The referee there says carry on. England had the ball, but he won't now. I think from uh, England's original move, when Peter Crouch flicked the ball on, both Joe Cole and Sean Wright Phillips were in a very advanced position. Well, it's a question of who we can get close to Crouch, Mark, isn't it, to give him some support? Yeah. Whether that comes from the centre of midfield with Lampard and Gerrard and Barry, of course, is a cover for them, isn't he? Well, if you look at them at the moment, England, England are 4 3 3, John, not 4 5 1. So they are. Here's Campbell. Yes, they've got Joe Cole and Wright Phillips pushed a long way down the pitch. Forward by Sol Campbell. This is looking for Crouch. Wayne Bridge. Cole tries to find his... Uh, Chelsea colleague big spread of Chelsea players in the side tonight well which is why they're playing 4-3-3 with Cole and Wright Phillips who are used to playing those positions for Chelsea the other thing as well long ball into uh, Peter Crouch and Croatia just dropped off him and let him have the ball That's a real experience back there Dario Simic is 95th cap tonight Robert Kovac is 70th they've been together a long time this team Niko Kovac is 36 years of age in midfield Obviously, 
quite neat ball players. That's Cranchar. This is Modric. More of him in a minute. He's the rising star of Croatian football. Keep your eye on the number 14. Still with Dinamo Zagreb, but liable to move in January. And I'm led to believe among other clubs, Chelsea interested. Top player. Serna. Bit of a tangle there, and England get the free kick. What a relief it would be if England could get an early goal. This is Barry. Gerard. The pitch on this side is the worst area. It's where Micah Richards and Wright Phillips have got to play in the first half. Niko Kovac. Good turn. Modric. Wright Phillips. Crouch in the centre waiting. Still waiting. Joseph Simeon has got a foot in. Cranchard. Eduardo was the target there. Bridge. Steve McLaren appealed for big backing from the Wembley crowd. He's getting it in the early stages. Barry. There is being called to the referee. If anybody got a yellow card tonight, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It's they're wiped out at the end of the qualifiers, but a red card would mean you miss the first game in the finals. I think the referee's also got to take into account the state of the pitch, isn't he? Well, Billich described it last night as an ice rink. This is Brett Phillips. Micah Richards. Gerard got that ball in. Oh! Attempt at a flying header. Yeah, Joe Cole was very low to the ground there. Yeah, nobody picked him up as well. It's a nice run, late run. Ball moved very quickly to the other end here by Croatia. They, there's certainly no suggestion early on, Mark, that they've come to make up the numbers having qualified. No, well, they're very, they're very good technically, John, as everybody knows, and, and they will keep the ball. It's just be interesting to see that the longer this game goes on in terms of into the tackle, exactly what the Croatians think of it. Jolly and Lescott to Gareth Barry, two players who a few months ago wouldn't have thought they'd be in this game. This is Gerard, right Phillips. Looking for Crouch. Oh, it's a header back surely here for Lampard. Great ball from right Phillips, diagonal to the far post, just what Crouch feeds on. Gerard was a foul off the ball. The referee played an advantage. Right Phillips is behind Simeonic. And this is Crenshaw. And now Modric. I think already, John, Simonix, the left back, looks very, very uncomfortable when Wright Phillips is running at him. He started his career as a centre-back, as I recall, Mark, didn't he? Well, he's playing at left back like a centre-back. <laughs> That's Robert Kovac to uh, the player who is at centre-back, which is uh, Simic. Robert Kovac. That well, was just a ball in from right foot. It's great ball to Krauss, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a, just whipped away from uh, Frank Lampard by Robert Kovac, wasn't it? This is Sernar. It's come across to Crenshaw. Eduardo in the centre, Pancho will shoot from here. Oh, it's gone right through! It's deceived Scott Carson, and England are a goal down! After only seven and a half minutes, the very thing they didn't want to happen, and particularly to the young goalkeeper. What on earth went on was that the pitch, I wonder? Nico Cranshaw. Seem to be any danger here at first when the ball went out to him. He comes slightly inside Micah Richards and it's gone in off the goalkeeper almost, Mark Lawrence. Well, the first rule of goalkeeping, John, is keep your eye on the ball, but also get your body in front of the ball and then if you happen to miss it, it hits your body and comes back out. That is just a pure lack of concentration by Carson.
What a shattering blow for England, for Carson, and indeed for Steve McLaren, who made the selection. First real attack that uh, Croatia had had, and it's Nico Cranshire. And Wembley has suddenly gone from uh, almost euphoric to very, very nervous. England have forced a free kick though, this is the time to hit back. Well, that was not in the script. It's like the stadium's in a state of shock, isn't it? Yes. Gerard will take the free kick for England out on the left-hand side. Sol Campbell is forward, so is Micah Richards, so is Jolly and Lescott. Crouch the deepest. But it's an easy one for Petticosa, overhit by Gerard. Yeah, it's a total waste, John, as well. It is so, so simple for the goalkeeper. I think it's his second touch, but it's just the easy. Spain have taken the lead against Northern Ireland, incidentally. But uh, what is patently obvious is that England are one behind to Croatia. Joe Cole. Crouch, shot for a shot, maybe no, with the right foot fast. Petty goes and makes the save, cover arriving. Robert Kovac. Could have been the equaliser by Wright Phillips. And the only problem for Wright Phillips in England was it was straight at Pletikosa. That's a free kick to Croatia, yes, but it could have done the same to Pletikosa as they did to Carson. I don't think that is long to think about it. That was a good ball from uh, Crouch as well, just stretching. Playing right Phillips through, one touch, and it's a hit, but right at him. It's a good save, but it's a comfortable save, John, for goalkeeper. OK. Petty Coase is very experienced, 65th cap tonight. Plays for Spartak Moscow, nearly went to Fulham at one time, I remember. Well, the crowd are doing their best to help dig England out of a great big hole. Cranshaw, this is Eduardo now. Scott Carson well, to go through here. I was just going to say to you, I, I just hope one of the more experienced players has had a little word with that, and I don't think they have. Just on the basis of, you know, just get on with it, don't worry about him. I mean, it was, well, it was more Frank Carson than Scott, wasn't it? I'm afraid so. Seven minutes. England go a goal down. Richards. Right Phillips. Gerard. Cole's got bridge in support. There's the cross, Crouch! Good defender by Robert Kovac, just did enough to put Crouch off. Good ball in, though. England come away with it again, though. Gerard. And again they look for Peter Crouch. And the others following up for the knockback. It's away by Chorluka, down the line for Cernar, challenged by Barry. Well, Gerard is driving the team forward here, right Phillips. Micah Richards has made the run, chance for England surely, no! It wasn't going in anyway from Crouch. But here's Joe Cole and here's Bridge. Well, it was a brilliant pass to play Micah Richards in, absolutely brilliant, and his ball across was good as well. Crouch just couldn't sort his feet out. Lampard. Barry. And now Campbell. This time Crouch heads back towards, oh, was towards Lampard. Nico Kovac has immediately sus that uh, Lampard is running onto those touches and Eduardo is away here for Croatia oh is he offside oh it's gone in and is the flag up the flag is not up and Olic has scored Olic has scored for Croatia it's 2-0 you can't believe this 
Palace. 13 minutes gone, and everybody looked for the offside. And it's Olic. Ivica Olic here, picking it up from Eduardo. Is he off? Is he off? No. No, he's not off. He's level. And he goes round Carson, and Olic has made it 2-0 to Croatia after 13 minutes. Arsenal's Eduardo made the pass. It cuts out the centre-backs. I think Bridge was playing him on side. Certainly somebody was. And Olic has an easy chance. John, there's no argument. Definitely on side. I think the problem was from England's point of view. They thought Eduardo de Silva, when he cut in from the right on his left, was going to hit it. And he played a sumptuous little pass to Olic, who timed his run to perfection. This is hard to believe. Although it's happening right in front of us. Gerard. England have now got to find two goals from somewhere to save this man's job and to qualify for the European Championships. They've also got to have ten minutes of not conceding another one. Correct. Barry. This is Crouch. Oh. Richards. Right, Phillips came off Joseph Simunic. What a baptism in competitive international football for the 22 year old goalkeeper. Couldn't be blamed for the second one. Absolutely exposed. Here's Michael Richards with the throw. Peter Crouch gets up there. Croatia get it away. My goodness, they've come to play Croatia. Eduardo. Ivica Olic is remembered in Croatia for scoring a very famous goal against Italy in the World Cup in Japan. But if he's uh, looking for another one for his scrapbook, one at Wembley will do nicely. Well, the timing of the run was brilliant. I mean, England defensively were statuesque, but the great timing. This is right, Phillips. Dear me. Modric. Well, I'm not often lost for words, Laura, but just sum up that first 15 minutes for me, will you? From England's point of view, I think Nightmare's probably the best I can come up with. The other problem as well, John, it's a Croatian side who are very, very good at keeping the ball. This is, this is the goal. We all think here, Eduardo, he's going to cut inside, cut inside, he's going to hit it. And he just played the ball through Sol Campbell's legs. And I, I don't know who was standing, or just playing for offside. It was criminal from England's point of view. You have to go with the runner. He was level with the man in the left-back position. There was no question that the assistant referee was right. Let's got to Campbell. Gareth Barry. In goes Cranshaw. Right, Phillips right in the corner. He didn't want to get anything on that at all. And as a result of it, it's merely a goal kick. Well, until tonight, England had only conceded four goals in this qualifying group. Two of them were in Croatia, two were in Russia. Now they've conceded two more. And the rain really is falling all around Steve McLaren in England. Well, they've not really recovered from the first goal, have they? Bridge, Cole outside him. Oh, and right, Phillips did well to try and get something on that. But it, as Mark Lawrence rightly says, every time Croatia come out of defence, you worry. This is uh, Cranchard, he's put that one out. Well, the other thing as well, John, every time the ball's played into the Croatian 18-yard box, it's coming out to one of their own players and they're just getting a foot on the ball and starting to attack from very, very deep. Yeah, Cranshaw at Portsmouth does love to come inside on his right foot from the left-sided position. He does love a shot at goal. He's not a prolific scorer, as it happens, but he certainly put his name on the, uh, the, the Wembley uh, record sheet tonight. And, of course, the other player involved in the second goal, Eduardo, is an Arsenal player. Surely the... 
overseas players from our own Premier League are not going to knock us out, are they? Here's Campbell. Just to keep the record straight, it's Andorra nil, Russia nil after 20 minutes. That couldn't happen, could it? Sweden are leading Latvia 2-1, which is bad news for Northern Ireland. This is Gerard. To England. Well, they wasted their last free kick from roughly the same area, but the, the other side, and it's important to get this one right. Les cuts up, Campbell's up, Kraut is in there as well. Well, yes, it's a Gareth Barry who's going to take it with his left foot here. Plenty of England players forward again. Look, they desperately need a goal back here. Seems to have. Okay, he's given the signal now. Comes up the Croatian head, it's a corner. And that's another waste, John. Two free kicks in good positions, two wasted free kicks. It's going to be headed away. We've obviously got to hope as well now that not only do England recover in this game, but that uh, if they can't, that Russia do us a favour in Andorra, or rather Andorra do us a favour against Russia. That is still a mathematical possibility. This is Cole. Barry. Bridge. What a weird old group this has been, hasn't it, from beginning to end. So unpredictable. It's getting more weird by the minute. I don't think we can expect too much from Andorra. They've lost all 29 of their qualifiers. Yeah, but... But as you say, in the context of what's happening just around this group at the moment, they'll probably beat Russia 1 0. Get the mat out. All of which is not disturbing Croatia, where Modric has just planted this ball too far ahead of Eduardo. 21 minutes gone. If you came in late, well, I don't know what to say really. You probably wish you, probably glad you did. Now, as it stands at the moment, as it stands at the moment, England would still qualify because Russia have not taken the lead in Andorra. It's when Russia score that that changes. Or when England score twice. Sol Campbell with the free kick. It goes to Crouch, but it heads just tamely through to Pretty Kosa. But the thing about that, John, is that Crouch can't do any more with that ball, so somebody's got to gamble. If it's Cole, Lampard, right for it, you know it's going in there. Gamble, run the other side. Robert Kovac. Simic. Niko Kovac to his brother. This is Eduardo, but this, uh, this time there is an offside flag up. Just as well for Sol Campbell, who's caught slightly in a way there. The other thing, going back to Croatia, John. You talked about Robert Kovac, the number four, the lad who plays at the back. He's, he's just a get-out. He's a safety ball every single time if they're struggling. It goes back to him. 
he gets it under control and he just starts Croatia playing again. Well, if we've only got one striker, then they've got a spare centre-back, haven't they? They certainly have. Oh, Bridges on his backside here. Oh, he handled it, didn't he? He oh, did. Well, I don't know what's going on between Sonar and Bridge, but the referee needs to sort it out. I think he said it was a foul. Pitch is very slippery on that side. That's an excuse, but it certainly is for the way Bridge fell. I've no doubt the news of England going two down has been quickly transmitted to Chris Hiddink. This is Cranshaw. Well, we had to depend on Israel, now we've got to depend on Andorra, is that right? <laughs> yeah. How well are we going then? Well, that's hit right, Phillips has gone out for a throw. I don't think uh, Scott Carson's actually touched the ball with his hands, has he, since the, uh, the mistake either? No, no, he hasn't had an opportunity to get a feel of it, he didn't beforehand either, did he, really? Here's Choluka. Oh, danger here again, Modric. Serna. Oof. Well, it's Crenshaw again. Slipping away from his marker, who I think was Micah Richards. It was. If you, you might see, I don't know if you see from this shot, Micah Richards suddenly has no idea where Crenshaw is. And he straight away looks across to the other side, but he has to get himself in a position where he can see ball and man. Olic to Crenshaw. Simic has to hurry there, find Simunic. Modric, a neat play by Croatia. Look at that, Niko Kovac. Modric again, not quite. Gerard steps in. Bridge. It's Barry. Oh dear. Bridge lost it and he's having to get back very quickly now. Needs cover on that side, Eduardo. Two waiting in the centre, oh, it's a corner. Yeah, I think it was Shaw Luca, wasn't it? The guy who plays for Manchester City, great break. Yeah, he had Real it. good pace as at, well. Look at Eduardo in the middle and, and Olic, they were both waiting. This is the problem for England at the moment. Don't look secure. Anywhere. Anywhere. It's a corner to be taken on the far side by Sernar for Croatia. Simonic is forward. Gets up there. Foul there, put up on Gerard. By Olic. Can't believe we've only played 27 minutes. Slaven Bilic. As cool as they come. Steve McLaren feeling the heat. Another click on by Crouchdown, nobody in there. I think that's the third occasion so far. At what stage does McLaren scrap this plan and put another striker on? Well, I can't see him doing that before half time, I would be surprised. Mourinho would, wouldn't he? Yeah. I think others would do as well. Barry. Cole. thing is you could put Joe Cole up there and play Gareth Barry on the left. Well you've got to get someone closer to Crouch than we've seen so far. Just to change it. Just yeah. Change exactly, it. Exactly, give them, exactly. give them something to think about. Well, this is Gerard. Now Joe Cole is the nearest to him. But again Lampard and Gerard aren't. Bridge.
Gerrard. Barry. Bridge. Floated across, but Pletcher goes at. Oh, well, no, it's caught it with one hand. John, it's another waste. Two free kicks to nothing, corner to nothing. Bridge has got time, he's not under pressure. Far too close to the goalkeeper. Well, you can't expect Wright Phillips to win a header there, right? No, not unless he's got a step ladder. <laughs> England subs warming up. Well, I did, I did feel that maybe he, ha he has to look at it sooner rather than later. What is it? 29 minutes. Richards. Campbell. Lescott. Bridge. That's the back four. Can they get it further forward? Lampard. Gone behind Steven Gerrard, away by Cranshaw. This is Olic. Oh, play on, Crouch. It's going nowhere apart from Tuchel Luca. I actually think Crouch has been England's best player so far. He's held the ball up, brought people into play, he's flicked it on, he's, he's basically doing his end of the bargain. The system around him that doesn't work. Exactly. Olic. Eduardo far side. Cranshaw. Nico Kovac. So much room, so much space, look. Crowd are getting restless now. Simonic. Gerard. Michael Richards using his strength there. There's a flag up though. Offside, I think. That's a free kick, John, I think, foul on Richards. Well, I think the linesman's flagging for one thing, and the referee's given another here. You're right, you're right. In my opinion, the linesman flagged for an earlier offside. Two goals. We have to remind uh, some viewers who may have come in late that uh, Branchard's shot was a, was an embarrassing moment for Scott Carson up to seven minutes, and then here's Mike Phillips, flags up, free kick. Second goal was scored by Olic. That's a foul by Robert Kovac. England now have a free kick and a chance to pull one back. Lescott and Campbell on their way up. Lescott scored plenty of goals this season for Everton. Standing behind Peter Crouch. Micah Richards got in the air as well. One of the Croatian players is going off for attention. That's the reason for the delay. Pletty Koza came to punch, it was a good punch in its way, there were plenty of people in front of him. England throw. Croatia is still down to ten men. He's back on now. Olic it was. Cole gets the ball in towards Crouch. Robert Kovac picked up a yellow card in that last uh, little flurry. But it shouldn't affect him unless, of course, he gets a second one tonight and has to go off here. But it won't affect him in terms of the games to come. Bridge. 
out, it's Cole will get a free kick. in by Gerard, Crouch in the crowd, but Croatia will break here and for a moment it's four against four. Cernar to Crenshaw. Modric. Handball. Gerard to Lampa. outside him, Joe Cole still slides it in towards Lampard thinking in the stand what Paul Robinson's thinking for that matter or David Beckham or the manager and Andorra are still holding Russia after 35 minutes let's have a look at the table as it stands now England are still, at this moment in time, despite being two goals down, they are still in second place. Bear in mind, though, England were 0-0 in Andorra and won 3-0 in the end. Here comes uh, Campbell. Oh, it's a poor kick by Carson. Right, Phillips. taken away from him by Eduardo. Well, the thing with England, John, is they've had lots and lots of possession. The lion's share, just, it's the final pass every time. It's just, I can only remember, and really now, the right Phillips chance, that seemed like an eternity ago. Here he is again. That's a foul uh, by Michael Richards on Joe Simonich. Well, let's have a, if you can bear it, let's look at what happened earlier. Here you are, Mark. Oh, well, this is just a catastrophe of all catastrophes, isn't it? And it's you waiting for the ground to open. This is, this is a brilliant goal from Croatia's point of view in terms of the movement, the timing of the run by Olic. Awful for England defensively. Am I right in thinking they've had basically two attacks and scored twice? Pretty much. Phillips, Crouch. Lampard looking for Cole on the far side. Shaw Luca is the defender. Cernar making up the ground here on bridge. Cole. Again they look for Crouch. There's the header down. Right Phillips tries to follow up. So does Gerard. And the captain goes down. And in fact the free kick goes the other way. Yeah, I think Gerard thought it was a free kick on him. But I, I think he lost control of the ball. And the referee's going to have a little word with yes, him. Yes, he almost lost control of himself just yeah. for a second there. Now, it was dissent. It wasn't punished with a yellow card, but the referee did speak to Stephen Gerrard. from the Andorra game and Russia have taken the lead 
and it's Sichev. I think it was he the man that hit the post just before the end of the game in Israel. I think he might have been. And he's got his own back tonight. Here's the updated table. Russia 24, England 23. As things stand, England are going out of the European Championships. Mark Lawrenson. Well, at the moment, John, from what we've seen in the virtually 39 minutes tonight so far, is they've just been very, very poor, England, virtually in every single department. We thought the lifeline thrown to us by the Israelis on Saturday was going to be enough. It's certainly not been the case so far. Goodness gracious, and all the scenarios that you imagine might happen here tonight, this one. I mean, I can't imagine anybody had a bet on Croatia to lead 2-0 at half-time, can you? What, what time did the second goal go in? 14 second minutes? second goal went in on 14 minutes, yeah. 8 and 14. You get monumental odds on that. England on the attack, though. Oh, well, <laughs> just for a moment. And that really has set Croatia on their way again. This is Eduardo. That's Modric. It's a poor ball by Gareth Barry, you know, that set that up. Yeah, it was. It's also a poor ball by Modric because I don't know if it's Cernar was breaking in an inside right position. But that's just symptomatic of England the first half, giving the ball away in, in advantageous areas to themselves. Sure. Steve McLaren will be consulting with Terry Venables at this point. I think they'll both be preparing to tear the paint off the dressing room wall, wouldn't you? They certainly would. Or uh, certainly get a couple of subs on at the beginning of the second half. Both change the system. Here's uh, Joe Simonich for Croatia. Olic. Niko Kovac or Chor Luke has made a run far side. Not sure whether we can find him. No, he can't. Bridges in the way. Well, there are. Go on, go on. I'm no, just going to say, where's Terry Venables? Where's your second in command when you need to have a little bit of concentration? Well, here's Modric for Croatia. Oh, and he hasn't held that one either. And it's come out to Crenshaw for Croatia. And it's a block by Michael Richards. Carson there didn't look confident either. This is right, Phillips. Now England have drawn them out. There's a chance on here if they play the right ball. Right, Phillips picking it up from Cole. Far side is Crouch. The 7,000 Croatia fans are having a party over there. I was going to say, it must sound like a home as well. Everybody's cheering throughout the game, but we must stress it's it's the Croatian supporters. This is the chance, isn't it? He just sort of tried to beat it away, didn't want to try and collect it, Scott Carson. You can't imagine what he's thinking. Touch by Crouch. Joe Cole. Kick, show Luca fouled by Cole. Well, if ever an England manager had to earn his money, John, it will be in about four or five minutes' time. Does he bring on Beckham? Not yet for me, no. I think Bright Phillips has been one of the plus points so far, they just stopped passing to him. The balls into Crouch have been decent. Yes, it's just that it's he's done all the knockdowns, no one's got on the end of them. No. The other thing as well is Beckham is blatantly unfit, isn't he? In terms of you know the match yeah. fitness. Well, I obviously, I think the obvious solution would be Defoe, wouldn't it, at this stage? It certainly would. Mm. 
game time, it's Croatia on the attack again. Joe Cole. A good time to score for England, this. Yes, it would, Bridge. Planted up there, but it's uh, Dario Simic who clears. Modric took that down beautifully. One wing to the other. This is Cranshaw. Oh, it's a decent ball into Modric. Cranshaw again. This is dangerous. It's Olic. It's a block, it's a block by Simonic on right Phillips. I think it's a booking job for me, that. It's just a blatant stop. Well, he knows all of that yellow cards, Joe Simonic, doesn't he? It's got to be a booking, might have stopped him, blatantly. Barry, Bridge, the 45th minute, England still two down, foul on Cole. One minute of added time. This could be the last chance England will have to go in with something at half-time. A goal now, and it might change everything. The fourth official has indicated a minimum of one added minute to be played. Gerard looks as though he's going to take this. Niko Kovac, there's trouble on here, but now it's gone wide. Yeah, I can make a Richards had the last header, but again, the delivery from the first free kick, the original free kick, was just didn't clear the first man, it's a cardinal sin. Is that your summary of the first half, basically? Well, I'm, I'm afraid it is, and the fact that obviously defensively, England have looked at sixes and sevens, and to concede such a soft goal, they've never really recovered from that moment. say in the England dressing room. Nico Cranshaw gave Croatia the lead after seven minutes, a dreadful mistake by the new goalkeeper, and after 14 minutes, it was 2-0 when Ivica Olic beat the offside trap. And I've handed back to Gary Lineker from all, in all sorts of situations all over the world, I've never had to do it quite like this. It's England 0, Croatia 2. Um, don't like to be in... Uh... Negative town, Ian, but um, I think we're there now. Um, I, I really don't want to say that. It was really... the goalkeeper, I feel sorry for the goalkeeper. It's a massive game to come in. As a forward, you're going to... He's, he's a new goalkeeper. He's fresh. We need to win the game. You're going to be shooting from everywhere. I would have thought the worst way Scott Carson's going to do the basics of what you do as a goalkeeper in skilly condition. You get your, your, your body behind the ball. And unfortunately, didn't do that, and you know we're a goal down. And but the, the whole team have well, they've been abject. They've been poor. I'm, I don't, I can't think of anyone out there who has actually played to the standard that we see them on a Saturday in the Premier League. I really can't. The system's not working at all. They're playing too many long balls to Peter Crouch. Talk about the systems. He changed it when they played Croatia away. Got beat. Generally, lately they've been playing pretty yeah. well as a 4-4-2, why would you suddenly change things? I mean, well, he's looked, at, it. He's looked, injuries, at, he's looked at the result, at the, um, what result we need and, and we need a point to go through, maybe that's in his thinking. But I did say before the game that I thought the system might suit Gerard or Lampard. It quite clearly hasn't. I think he has to change it immediately. Um, the defending's been very, very poor. The attacking, there hasn't been any. I think we've had one shot yeah. on target, which has come from, from Sean Wright Phillips. To me, there's no urgency. We're getting, we're getting free kicks. We're walking 10 or 15 yards back nice. They're very slowly, comfortable on the ball. Letting them get into their positions, letting them get well organised, instead of getting on the ball and having a little bit of urgency. Just could it take someone out there to actually get the crowd going. If it takes someone to go and rattle someone, go and bring someone down with a foul, just to get the crowd to try and get some enthusiasm into it, because at the moment... So flat and dead, it's incredible. I'm going to try and be positive, because Roy wants me to be positive. But um, You can cite the pitch, you know, we cited the pitch before the start, you can cite the system and how bad the system is. But if you'd been totally pragmatic about the first half, you'd have to say devoid of class, quality, organisation. But the biggest thing is devoid of fight. 
the 45 minutes mm. of the first half. But after what, what, how could that be? Why are they going out so it's, flat it's, in a game of such importance it's and strange. significance? It's strange when we... we because because they've let the goal get to them. Yeah, the, the, the exactly. first, actually, the first five minutes was the best that, in the first half that they played. And then the goalkeeper makes a catastrophic, catastrophic error. Right, and, and the heads suddenly go down, and they've never got up again. Yeah, the fear factors. It is. Crept in. The, the, the players actually look scared out yeah. there. I mean, as Alan said, five minutes, okay. After the goal, it just needs someone to, to get this game by the scruff of the neck and say, hey, hang on a minute, lads. That 45 minutes was nowhere near good enough for an England team at Wembley in front of 90,000. When you've got a chance to go through, when you've been uh, handed for, a chance. For, to for go what's through. at stake? Well, he's got to make changes before you start. Yeah, you got you've got you've to go. You've got to go back to two, Crouch right? Or take yeah. Crouch off and bring two men that are, are relatively quick on, uh, and then go four four two, and have again. But you've, you've got big. You have a goal, but, yeah, but Al, big, you can do all that if you're not going to get in there like you want to win a game and get around people. And Croatia look like they're at home. You're not going to get around people and force them into things. We're not playing like we need to win this game. We're playing like we're waiting for something to happen from someone else. Croatia have had it too easy. There's no England player at, at any time getting it in amongst them. They're, they're standing five and ten yards off and let them play nice and comfortable, play passes out the back four. Someone's got to get up there and get, get in amongst them. We've all played in big games where it's gone wrong for you. Yeah. Everyone is, yep. right? What you've got is you've got to have leaders. Somebody, like he says, has got to take the game by the scruff of the neck. The manager must be positive. The manager must sit in that dressing room and give a speech like no other speeches, and then change it and make sure that when he changes it, he gets it right this time. Because obviously, he stands or falls by what he thinks is right, and in the first half, he's got it totally wrong. And his first, his big selection was the goalkeeper, and it, he made a terrible error. Well, nobody said that it was ever going to be easy for Scott Carson, but unfortunately for him, he really hasn't touched it in the first five or six minutes, and then this happens. And I agree entirely with Ian Wright, who says it's all about technique here. Can't blame the pitch here in the slightest. It's all about technique. You've got to get your body behind it. What, what did we say before the game? We said about the pitch. Now, Croatia have looked at the pitch and they thought, new goalkeeper, debut, we'll massive pop. game, tell you what to do. Anyone within 20 or 30 yards, what I want you to do is, Bilic would have been saying to him, the manager, have a shot on goal and test him and see what he's made of. Now... I mean, his, his arms are to, to, to the right of him, I think. He doesn't get his whole body behind the ball. It's, it's, it's bound to have had an effect. Well, you look yeah, shell-shocked, you really does. That was a bad kick-out, could have led to another goal. And then the chance late on, you know, 20 yards up. You know, he's got to do better. His confidence that. is shot there, you can see that. Would you take him off? Well, I think I'd, a major decision again. I think David James is, is you've got to do it. You know, the, go, the goalkeeper now, even if we get back into this game, you, you, you're worried about anything that's going in and around the goalkeeper. Yeah, Can you imagine how Jolene Les, how's Jolene Lescott feel? How's, how's Michael Richards feel? Yeah. Wayne Bridge. You know, of course, Sol's got the experience, but there's, there's, there's a lot of nervousness around. It's been well, the, story. the other, other thing yeah. is that, you know, we said at the top of the programme, it's all right to defend the 18-yard line that, like the one in Russia and they were magnificent, but the minute you start coming up, that's when you know how good your defence is. Absolutely. Yeah. The minute they've started to come up, they've looked yeah. so I mean, ordinary. It's goalkeeping errors have uh, just summed up England's campaign, really, I mean, in, the, in the big games. Well, we, we, we've been struggling, haven't we? For, for, for goalkeepers. This was a, a that's, freak. But that's, a, that's over there when we played them. All right, I mean, that. that it's happened to him at a time a when he's having a nightmare as well. He is, he's having a bad time, is there. Yeah. But it's, it's what happens when you have a bad time. Sometimes it goes from, from, from bad to worse. And he's, he was having a bad time at Taunton when this happened against Russia. That's, he's yeah. got to deal with that better. They're the only three games, yeah. ironically, that England have conceded in. And the mistakes. I don't think there was, there was it was controversial replacing Robinson, but you know it's a, such a big test for a, a guy at 22 years of age. All right, David James has made mistakes before for England, but he's had a great season at Portsmouth. You know, and again, you stand and fall, but what you think is right, and he's got it wrong. Massive. And then, it, and then it went from bad to worse. I mean, defensively, England have struggled as a unit. Well, as I said to you, when, the minute you start coming up the pitch, is the minute you know that if you're organised. You've got pace and quality. First of all, Lescott's got to go and deal with that. He's got to win that. And then secondly, now you look how many white jerseys are back there. It's six against two, right? A pub team is going to do better than this. Saul's got to get across. Quick. Then everybody goes to sleep. Wayne Bridge in a terrible position. 
and you're two down. Sean, Sean's got to stay with us. He's there. got to go with he, he, has to, he can see his man from from a long way out, and Sean Wright Phillips has to stay with his man there. I mean, it's all right us sitting here and criticising Scott Carson, but defensively as well is, is I mean, it's been so poor as well as this. Right. This this goal will sum it up. He's ran from the halfway line, and he's ran I don't know 30, 40, 50 yards there. Has anyone got a touch to that ball? No, they haven't. And you've got two or three uh, England defenders there standing watching, and they've been they've been punished again. And, and it's exactly what they deserve in, in that first half. And I mean, us sitting here, I mean, that's that's so hard to, to say that England at this time are getting what they deserve. They, they, they're getting beat two 0 and it's, right. it's probably it's probably the worst forty five minutes you'll ever see. No. <laughs> the problem for the manager is it's not just one department that's struggling; it's everywhere, everywhere. right across the board. They are toiling like you know, and you know I'm watching. You mentioned Gerard and Lampard, like two so experienced internationals. They've got to get in there and you know and give them something, like to get everybody else going because that's what you need. You need somebody. You need somebody to go in there. And well, and you're it, talking about someone to go in there. I'm just hearing uh, in the earpiece that um, Defoe and Beckham uh, are coming on uh, for Barry and Wright Phillips. What do you think of those changes? Well, they were the, they just were, going to four four two. They were two start. of the yeah, big calls that, that that before the game that he, he chose um, not to play. I said on Friday night I thought he would have played um, Defoe with up with uh, with Crouch, irrespective yeah. of whether we need a, a, a well, point. Well, it gives you a threat behind, which is yeah. when England don't have that, they struggle. Absolutely, we uh, we haven't got in behind them at all. I know the pitch might be playing a part that it might be hard for balls to stay onto the pitch if you're going to try and fizz them through. But at least. Now, when we're playing the ball up to up to the front men or man, there's going to be someone around them because there's been far too many long straight balls into Very crouch. Which, all right, you might have won them, but there's no one actually getting on the end of them. We're so not, that yeah. says to me that the system from the midfield is not working. England haven't created uh, too many chances. Um, the first of a couple fell to Sean Wright Phillips. This was um, this was a this was a very good chance, and uh, when when it builds up, I think Peter Crouch does brilliant. He stretches. And as he stretches, he just tows it in. And I really do think that Sean could hit that first time. But he's just getting, and, he's, and he's hit it at that height. Of course, he's hit the target. But he's hit it at that height. was quite a comfortable height. He's got it, has it first I think thing, if he hits that first time, he's going to catch the goalkeeper a little bit more of a surprise. If he hits it there, when he takes that touch there, not only does he give the defender a second to get back, he also gives the goalkeeper a chance to set. just to set himself. And you see the goalkeeper get his legs a yard or two apart and he's got himself set with his hands up. If he hits it first time, he doesn't get the time. That's it, nil-nil as well. This is great play by Richards. Gets in. What I wish comes to the near post... I think he's gone with the wrong foot now. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, why is he letting that come across his body to, to t try and tuck it away with his well, left? I would make the point here is look at it. We've only got one person in the box. Mm. Yeah. We've got him behind them, which we haven't done many times, and we've got one person in the box who's one trying strike. to thread that goal. One striker and one in the box, and, and, and that ain't good enough. Uh, England have it all to do. Let's pause briefly to bring you news of other vital European qualifiers tonight. With all the info, Jake Humphrey. Thanks very much, Gary. Well, if things stay as they are at Wembley, England will need a nigh-on miracle this evening from Andorra. The European minnows, who've lost their last 29 European qualifiers, will need to get a result against Russia. Watching that game for us is Roger Johnson. At half-time, it's Andorra nil, Russia 1. The home defenders held a white wave of Russian pressure at bay until seven minutes from half-time when Dmitry Saichev rose bravely to hot nod a right-flank cross past Alvarez in the Andorra goal. To that point, he'd made a string of solid stops and Alvarez did the same just after the visitors went ahead, saving a penalty from Denis Kolodin. Russia know they have to win to overhaul England and Andorra haven't managed a single shot. So while technically there's still hope, Steve McLaren shouldn't bank on any get-out-of-jail card here. Half-time, Andorra nil, Russia 1. Thanks very much, Roger. Now, I know it's not nice to look at, but let's take a quick look at Group E. As you can see, Croatia, they've already qualified there at the top. If the results, both at Wembley and in Andorra, stay as they are, Russia have pipped England to the second qualifying spot. Right, let's turn our attention now to Group F and Northern Ireland's heroic attempt to be at next season's European Championships. Nigel Worthington's men had to beat Spain in Spain and hope that Latvia can spring a surprise against Sweden. Two truly remarkable results. I can tell you there was only one goal in the game in Gran Canaria and watching the match for us was Jackie Fullerton. He 
he's hit it well, he's hit it very well indeed. What a finish. Seven minutes into the second half, and Xavi has the finish. He got the first goal in Belfast a year ago when Northern Ireland beat the Spanish by three goals to two. This goal is like a dagger through the hearts of Northern Ireland. Mike Taylor, onside perhaps, it took a touch on the way through. Well, look at that, an unlucky goal. And confirmation that Northern Ireland's slim hopes of qualification have ended with that 1-0 defeat in Spain. They had hoped to finish second, but will actually end up in fourth place behind Sweden and Denmark, who are both on course for victories this evening. Um, I just can quickly tell you that the other home nation in action this evening are Wales. They're currently 0-0 against Germany in Germany. They're midway through the second half. Right now, though, time to hand back to Gary Lineker and a very nervous Wembley Stadium. Thanks, Jake. Yes, uh, England have a mountain to climb in the second half. Um, they've made a couple of changes and a change to the system, no doubt. 4-4-2, Defoe alongside Crouch. Well, at least he's done something. He's done something that he's gone positive. Um, as bad as England were in the first half, we all know that one little thing, one little bit of luck can change things dramatically. You get a goal, you get a bit of inspiration from somewhere. Everybody on the pitch, the 11 players in that white jersey, respond to that and... Be and then, and also, you give the crowd something to yeah, shout about. Yeah. You get the crowd going, and before you know it, you're back in the game. That's the big thing for me. We have to try and get the crowd back on side, give them something to shout about. Obviously, a goal will do that. Just but try and create something. It's going to be the greatest performance. comeback of all time. It's not over yet. It's going to be very difficult, but it'll be the comeback of all comebacks. It will be. Well, and what a story for Beckham. Yeah, if he scores a, a hat-trick. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he's had a few moments in his career. Um, that will be something special. Greece, of course, that magic free kick and the final seconds was, of course, 2-2. They came from behind on that occasion. Can England possibly do it again? Let's rejoin Mark Lawrenson and John Motson. So David Beckham is going to win his 99th cap for England. Being wished all the best by the other substitutes. He's coming on, as you said, with Jermaine Defoe, Gareth Barry and Sean Wright Phillips off. And um, goodness, when I was looking back at half-time on the first goal, Peter Shilton took a lot of uh, criticism for the goal that we showed by Poland in 1973 here. He went on to become the best goalkeeper in the world, in my opinion, so let's hope Scott Carson can put that behind him. Number 16, Jermaine Defoe. Also coming off number 10, Sean Wright Phillips. Been replaced by number 17, David Beckham. There's a huge cheer to welcome Beckham into what will be a 4-2-4 or 4-4-2, depending how you look at it, Mr Lawrenson. I think it's 4-4-2 for now, John. And the longer the game goes on in England chase, it will develop to 4-2-4. Are we going to see one of the most dreadful nights that England have had at Wembley, or are we going to see a remarkable recovery? It has to go one way or the other, while still keeping one eye on what's happening to Andorra and Russia. As for Croatia, well, they don't have to worry anyway. Weather conditions not getting any better, it's still pouring with rain. Mr Venables was in the Royal Box for part of the first half, he's now back on the touchline and coming out somewhat belatedly as the coach. Just in time to see Gerard try to feed Beckham for the first time. Micah Richards. He does feed Beckham. Joe Coles made a run across the box. Gerard. Oh, a little dummy by Crouch. Lampard. Richards. Beckham. And then a header by Gerard. Cernat. Oh, the crowd has really raised the volume at the start of the second half. They mean to get right behind England all over again. Here's Gerard. Away by Choluca. This is going to be one of the most seminal second halves ever seen at Wembley in an England international. Lampard. 
It could make or break careers this next 45 minutes, especially under the coach. Lampard, Defoe, Cole, Crouch, Gerard running on. Croatia work a ball out though to Eduardo and running forward he was too. Just uh, seen off there by Lescott. Lampard spreads it wide, David Beckham. We're waiting for a contribution, maybe even a miracle, from a man who plays for LA Galaxy. Defoe. Gerard. Early ball. Oh, Joe Cole who took the tumble. To Croatia, Kramer. Yeah, I think Joe Luke in the right back just stood big and firm against Joe Cole. He tried to throw himself at the ball. He's just strong, isn't he, Joe Luke? Look. time these teams met prior to this group was when England beat Croatia in the Euro 2004 competition four goals that day two for Rooney just Lampa one goal now from somewhere would restore some sort of hope for England this is Campbell up for Crouch, heads it on. And the problem then, John, was that Defoe had made a run, sort of goal side of Crouch, rather than the other side of Crouch, which obviously I think McLaren's on the touchline at the far side, trying to point out to him, along with the passing. And with the umbrella. This is Niko Kovac. So often when a team gets an early 2-0 lead, the other team scores to bring it back to 2-1. It happens over and over again. Now then, referee's going to get a yellow card here. Eduardo. Foul on Richards. Doesn't exactly look too bothered, does it? Wasn't the worst of tackles either. England need the great escape now, don't they? My, my word, they do. Crouch is foul. Free kick in the central position. David Beckham, where are you now? Think about this as well, John. It's in the middle of the goal. So it'll be very interesting to see where Pleti Koza actually stands. You keep an eye on that, Mark, because uh, Robert Kovacs was the player who pushed Crouch. And David Beckham is very deliberately putting the ball down. And is this Old Trafford, Greece 2001 all over again? The whole of England hopes so. Just clipped somebody in the Croatian wall. It's a corner which Beckham will also take. Lescott making a run towards the ball. It's come out to Olic. Oh, there's a free man on the far side. If Steven Gerrard hadn't got in there. Well, who on earth was supposed to be marking the player on the left, Cranchire? Well, Michael Richards is already in the box, John, attacking the ball. Offside wider, but that was three against one, it actually. Was, it was. It's a little bit too early to be taking risks like that, because it's 3-0. There's at no it. way back. I mean... I know. Carson takes the kick. Up goes Crouch again, but once more the header goes nowhere near an England player. Nice 
management team restored now. And like everybody else up and down the country in living rooms and pubs and streets and wherever else you're watching this, there are anguish looks on the faces. This is Chorluka for Croatia. It was Olic, it was Niko Kovac to Eduardo. He's got Campbell for company and Eduardo is quick. And the goalkeeper comes to make a save. Yeah, good save as well. It is John, it's with his feet and he'll do him the world of good that Scott Carson. Lacking, sorry, lacking in conferences we saw in the first half, but again, just a little ball played down the side, Eduardo's away. Yeah, if he had been a right-footed player, he might have done better with that. Anyway, he's not. And it's come back here for a very hopeful crack at goal from Niko Kovac. Just England asleep again, just a simple corner, dummy over on the edge of the box, free shot for Kovac. This is the Carson save, Campbell's lost him by half a yard, although Sol Campbell did slide in typically and get something on it at the end, I think. Certainly put uh, Eduardo off in there. Here's Crouch. That was uh, Sernar. much about it can he well none of them can of the uh, Terry Rooney Michael Owen and Rio Ferdinand are in there somewhere but none of them can uh, affect this things don't improve they'll be going on their holidays in the summer Cerna oh a nice little touch there and this is Modric and England got away with that I thought it was a foul Anyway, Beckham to Gerrard. Bridge. Joe Cole. Cole again. He's come inside Olic. Oh, this could be a, this could be a penalty. It is for Holdings. Defoe has been Robert Kovac. Defoe, but the assistant referee spotted it. There was definite contact, there's no doubt about that. Just watch as the ball goes in here from Joe, from Joe Cole. Robert Cope, well, it's a it's an arm, is it? Simunic just tugs him slightly there. Left back Simunic on Defoe. And England have been given the most unlikely lifeline here. As they were against Poland in 73 when Alan Clark scored from that penalty. We have another one here tonight. What a responsibility for Frank Lampard. This puts England right back in it if he scored, and he did miss one, don't forget, in the World Cup quarter-final shootout. Everybody hold your breath. Scores! England have new hope. Lampard from the penalty spot. It's 2-1. Well, it takes great nerve, doesn't it, in this situation? And a man who's sometimes England been cheered by the Wembley crowd is the man that puts England back in the box seat here. The other thing about the penalty, John, and the Croatians are having a go at the referee, but Simonic undoubtedly pulled the If he doesn't pull his shirt, it's no penalty, there's no argument. Well, the, the uh, man who, whose name will go down as making that decision is Stefan Wittberg of Sweden, the assistant referee on the far side of the field from us. I don't think the referee would have given it. And suddenly, Croatia looked rattled. Oh, it's been taken quick, now referee wants it back. A foul by Cernart. The referee wants to speak to Cernart twice. Made England bring it back. Listen to that noise. Well, 
dangerous now, the noise from the crowd at Wembley as Beckham prepares to take this free kick and could England here score again and get back to 2-2 in a matter of minutes? And it goes from Beckham. Now shouts from the crowd of handball, but it wasn't. But England still have it, multi-ball, straight back into play. Bridge. And again. This is a different game now. But Croatia know that if England push forward, Modric with the pass there, Eduardo, Olic. I'm pretty sure that came off Wayne Bridge's right foot. He's just checking the run, and I think he makes last contact with it. He does. Well, it's a corner, so he must have done. It's a corner to Croatia, but oh, it could have been so much more. Absolutely brilliant, pure reflex save. He has no time at all to react to this. He does magnificently. Well, some amends made there by Carson for what happened in the seventh minute. What a game this is. Oh, goodness, he's kept England in it. Free kick to Croatia. Yeah, I think Crouch has stuck his hand out right under the referee's nose. Slavin Bilic and his team have come here to play a proper game of football. There's no question about that. And we've got one. With nearly an hour gone. Defoe, Crouch. Micah Richards going down the outside. Tries to power his way past Simunic. Well, it's funny how things in football even themselves up, isn't it? Rooney conceded a penalty which wasn't really inside the area in Russia. And here tonight we've had a soft penalty. I think it was soft, but Mark said quite rightly that he shouldn't have dubbed him against Joe Simunic. It's put England back in it. Up goes Crouch again. But England still need another goal, remember, as long as it stays 1-0 to Russia against Andorra. Didn't we say it always goes to the wire, Mark? Oh dear, oh dear. is the official attendance tonight. I think that's probably the biggest since Wembley's been open. Never quite get to the 90 because of uh, pockets of segregation. And now Simonich is hurt. The play continues. Beckham picks him up. Terrific show. Well, I don't know if you noticed as well, he was mobbed by his teammates straight away. Eduardo. Well, it's given away by Chor Luca. This is Campbell to Beckham. Just trying to force it a little too bit, a too much. This is Eduardo, but it's gone straight through to Carson. 
Steve McLaren, of course, has one more substitution he can make as we approach the uh, middle of the second half. Here's Cernar. He's got Olex to his right, Eduardo to his left. England need to be watchful. Oh, and Bridge wasn't. And Olex, another save by Carson. Oh, Bridge, Bridge has got away with absolute murder. I mean, in this position as well, is you can't do that. You've just got to deal with it first time. Well done, Carson. Gerard. And this is Beckham. Defoe. Appeals for a foul. Referee says no. Eduardo, no, it's not him either. It's away by Lescott. And then forward by Gerard towards David Beckham. Offside. And the game's now been stretched on it. It really seriously is being stretched. And you have to say, Croatia are just as much a threat to score a goal as England at the moment. Joe Cole. Joe Cole has really been persistent here. Croatia aren't very happy with the referee just at the moment. That was Cernar again. Lampard trying to get uh, Wayne Bridge in round the back. Goal kick. Just feels like a cup tie this game, isn't it? Feels like a cup final. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's better than a cup final. It, it's still Andorra nil, Russia one after an hour. They kicked off four minutes behind the teams here at Wembley. Defoe! Richards, here's Beckham! Grouch waiting in the centre! Grouch! Surely! Yes! Yes! Peter Grouch has done it for England! It's 2-2! And the big man keeps up his phenomenal scoring record! But guess who supplied the cross? Possibly sent them to the European Championship Finals. Peter Crouch got it down on his chest, cracked it in. 14 goals in 24 internationals. Thank you very much. It's level. You can't understate the quality of the Beckham cross. Absolutely brilliant. What a first touch from Crouch as well. And he just waited for the ball to drop. Fantastic composure in the cauldron of this game. And once again. Once again, oh, there's going to be a lecture here for Jermaine Defoe. But once again, the quality of the cross. And that's the reason that Steve McLaren brought Beckham back. Well done, Michael Richards as well. He spotted the, he spotted the build at play from Croatia and just nipped in and pinched the ball off them. So... The recovery is underway, now they must guard against Croatia scoring again. Niko Kovac gets a free kick. Modric, Cernar. Modric again, three waiting in the centre. Corner is it? Yes. They mustn't fall asleep, England. Mustn't. <laughs> but the corner's been taken quickly. Here's Cernar. Oh. Well, I mean, for all the excitement, we're really back where we started, aren't we? Yeah. Doesn't feel like it, though, does it? <laughs> Not at all. Now, let's have another look at the, at the group table now. It's changed. My, how it's changed. England are now ahead of Russia, and the reason they are is the head-to-head -head results. Russia beat England 2-1 in Moscow, England won 3-0 here. That's the way it looks and that's the way it is. Peter Crouch, what a record.
could be a very, very nervous last 23 minutes. It's bound to be, unless England, of course, get ahead. I think, I think Croatia about to make a change as well. And this is uh, Robert Kovac to Simunic. Sernar. Olic. Knocked over by Joe Cole. Play on its Lampard. And Scott Carson made that save. Mark. England were 2 1 down. Exactly. Brilliant. is still looking dangerous on the break Eduardo, free kick Cranshaw was fouled before that and they're going to bring on um, Ladon Petric who was left out largely because he had flu yesterday but he is a dangerous striker he's left footed, he scored four in one game against Andorra he plays for Borussia Dortmund and he replaces Eduardo First time it's gone quiet. I'm worn out. You are. You're younger than I am. Modric. Here's Chiluka. Chiluka again. Cerno. Foul that challenge by Chorluca. And yeah, I think the referee thought that he lunged in. I know, I know you think it was a soft penalty, but I'm absolutely certain it was a penalty. What, what a stupid thing to do. 2 0 up, yeah. and here's, here's the crack, the second goal. Brilliant. Look at that. Forever just watching the ball all the time. Never took his eyes off it. Great technique, that is. You think Crouch hasn't scored in the Premier League yet this season? <laughs> he's not playing. He, he's not complaining about it now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is uh, Richards. Kingdom could just get another goal here. Gerard. Free kick. Oh, here's another opportunity. Only one man taking the ball here. What does he do from there? It's a good 30 yards. Far post ball. Sol Campbell was there. Gerard off the legs. Cernar saves the corner. It's a throw in on the far side. It's a bit ironic, John, that the, the pitch has been spoiled by the uh, American football played on it, but if you think about Beckham, he's almost like a, an American football player who comes on a special team player, isn't he, with his passing? Well, he's playing in the right country now then, isn't he? Well, England. <laughs> Here's Crouch. Header on towards Defoe. Foul by Defoe. That's the position for, the, for Defoe, though. The other side of Crouch. Well, England gave themselves so much to do after that first 15 minutes, but somehow or other, they've clawed their way back. This is really the story of this group, isn't it? Niko Kovac, Chorluka. This stage of the proceedings, it makes you glad that England only needed a draw and didn't have to win, doesn't it? Yeah. The other thing is, well, you have to give credit where credit's due to Croatia. Just kept the two up front all the game.
Michael, the Swedish referee. I think he's done a good job in difficult circumstances, conditions. Yes, he has. He's almost got a smile on his face, he's loving it. Some smile on, smiles on English faces if it stays like this, that's for sure. Didn't Crouch take that goal well, though? I thought he did okay in the first half as well, you know. Joe Cole and Petrich here. Well, England won another free kick. It's uh, Lampard there. Falling out with Cernar, who's a feisty customer. Away by Lescott. Croatia are still at it, you know, they really are. Franchi working away on that left-hand side. Niko Kovac. Chorluka. <laughs> Offside Crouch. Frandic has come on, he plays for here and Veen in Holland, straightforward midfield replacement. And there are just about 15 minutes plus stoppage time to go. That distance is where England stand from the finals of the European Championships, having looked out of them in the first quarter of this game. Modric. Or Luca Cerno going to be a very nervy last 15 minutes that's for sure yeah you, see, you don't you don't want England to sit back too far Kovac Modric good turn free kick takes it quickly Pranjic Good ball inside too. David Beckham is uh, right back there defending. Niko Kovac. Petric. Oh, he nearly got uh, Prandric in there. Petric again. Oh, he scored! Extraordinary! It's the substitute Petric with the deadly left foot. And Croatia have gone 3-2 up. And England may be out after all. Something out of nothing from Laden Petric. Who'd only been on the field five minutes. Prandric, the other substitute, makes it. He fires a shot, it goes across Carson Mark. It's 3 2. I don't think Carson sees this until very late. Comes past Sol Campbell. And it was just hit so early, wasn't it? Good play by Pranjic as well into him. One touch and hit. How many more twists and turns are there in this story? 
just when England looked to be within touching distance of getting through. Petrish strikes what could be the hammer blow. Joe Cole. So England need one back now. Oh, it's a mistake by Gerard. It's Petrich again. Pranbridge is up with him. Offside, offside here. Olic. Well, England are really lucky because if Olic just holds his run, he's in. He never, he never ever looked across the line at all. Another England sub coming, I think. Let's have a look at the league table again. England are out at the moment. One point behind Russia. But Russia still only lead 1-0 at Andorra after 75 minutes. And Bent, Darren Bent, I think, is coming on in place of Joe Cole when it happens. It's desperate now for Steve McLaren, well, it's desperate for every Englishman. Here's Crouch. And <laughs> hadn't Croatia been at it tonight? Here's Olic. Oh, that needed covering, that needed covering by Lescott. It's a brilliant pass from Olic. He's just stretching. I think he originally tries to just play it off Lescott for a corner and manages to bend it round him. Oh, it was dangerous. Well, Mark, we've seen England in quarter-finals and semi-finals, but this is a roller coaster ride, the sort I don't think I've ever experienced before. Gerard having to defend against Niko Kovac. Here he is again. With a back heel he tried there, but England got it away. Wayne Bridge. Now we've got Benton Defoe up front now, with Crouch, all three of them, making angles here. Beckham to the right, Crouch's header, Defoe. I two, two strikers from Tottenham have hardly played, have they, in the yeah, first two? Exactly, and I think, I think Benton's just going to play on the left of a, of a three, really, alongside Defoe and Crouch. Bridge. On by Lampard, Bent trying to get in there, so was Defoe. Bridge again. Not a good header by Simonich, Beckham. Back in by Sol Campbell. Gerrard. Defoe and Bent both chasing. Too high as it came out for Crouch, whistle's gone. Yeah, fouled by Michael Richards on the back of Simonich. The danger here is England have got to commit and overcommit really and Croatia is so good on the break. Petric is hovering in the middle again. He was uh, second to Lescott there. I thought we'd seen all the twists and turns on Saturday in Tel Aviv. By no means. And is there one more? Not there. You just well, this is the third creation goal. You just, you just wonder. I think Carson sees it very, very late. Fingertip to it. There's a celebration run by Bilic. You'd think he'd won the European Championship, not uh, taking the lead in what for them is a, a rather irrelevant game. Well, not irrelevant, but uh, they're already through. I hate to see them play when they're serious. Yeah, when well, it is relevant. <laughs> Here's Bridge. 
Croatian supporters are making huge noise on the far side. England's have been silenced, but here come the three. Crouch on. Lampard backing up. That's a push, isn't it? Yeah, it's got to be a free kick against Lescott. It's a semi foul. He's got him going up where he doesn't want to go. Back to his own goal, just keep him in there. Slavin Vilic is going to give uh, Rakitic a run, I think. Number seven, only 19 years old here, the youngest man in the squad. Ivica Olic is the man going off. Won't be hurrying, will they? Nope. Well, Mr. Rooney, he can't influence this, but his own future next summer particularly is in the balance here, as is every other prospective England player. Here's Wayne Bridge, Crouch. Petric down the line for Sernar he kept it in that is forced the corner they've just kept the ball brilliantly haven't they in all situations it's going to be taken by Sernar Big climb there by Joseph Simonic. And you just see the advantage of having Crouch in the team as well, John, defensively, as well as in forward situations. It's all boiled down to the last five minutes. And there in the stand, Prince William and Brian Barwick, the chief executive. Goodness knows what's going through his mind. If it stays like this, there'll be some big decisions to make. But wait, here's a chance for Darren Bent. Oh, so close! The first time he got into the game. Well, he did brilliantly, you know, because he just held the defender off. First, at first instance, you think the defender's going to be favourite for this ball, and he just pure strength knocks him out of the way, hits it as well. Left foot half while he's unlucky. Just clipped the roof of the net as it went over. Becker not in the game at the moment, they can't get the ball to him. Michael Richards. Lampard. Gerard. Beckham outside now. No. Uh, needs it to his feet, doesn't he? Got to go to his feet. It's getting very close now. Rakitic. Touched by Beckham to Crouch. Gerard trying to force his way through. Croatia have nobody in the England half at the moment. This is Cernar. Now Chor Lucas decided to make a run on the near side. Cernar's lost it now. Chance for England now. Lampard off. It's an England throw forced by Lampard. <laughs> Aimed at Crouch, but not far enough. Another chance for Bridge. It may not be too late for England. This is Lampard. And 
Croatia get the ball out. England are two minutes away, plus stoppage time from European Championship Oblivion. Carson takes the kick. Crouch tries to win it. Bridge. Surely there's going to be one more chance. Surely there is. Lovely turn by Modric. Amidst all this mayhem, we've seen a star in the making there tonight. Serna. Croatia have got five players in attack, even at this stage. Luca into Petric. Say something, Mark. Say something. Come on. England just got to plow forward and hope, just hope that something comes off here. Crouch is the target. Defoe, no. Ball's gone out for Bridge to take the throw. Can he get any? purpose on this to try and well Crouch is a long way away Bent is the target now whistle's gone free kick to Croatia yeah fouled by Lescott well there's just there's no certainty required anymore John it's just get the ball into the opposition penalty area challenge don't foul hope you get a break Andorra nil, Russia one with five minutes to go. Three extra minutes here at Wembley will be signalled. England need one goal to save, well, to save a whole welter of uh, criticism, to say the least. All the old doubts will be resurfaced unless they score here, and some of them would be anyway. to kick long it's now or never for England Bent Defoe it just won't fall to a white shirt Petrich forward again from Campbell Ball's bounce oh and a wild clearance the throw in as well I thought for a moment it was a corner Rich to take the throw, Lescott's forward, Campbell's forward, everybody's forward. Headed on, oh, and Johnny and Lescott got a touch on that, and this is a corner. This is a corner, Beckham to take it, please. Riches is in there, Crouch is in there. And Croatia have got the ball away. Rakitic. Oh, and Croatia breaking it. Rakitic is free in the middle. He could finish it here. Number seven. And he's back heeled it, trying to fight. Oh, they've made a mess of it themselves. Niko Kovac. Anything can happen now. Two minutes to go of extra time. Beckham. Looking for Crouch. Headed away by Josie Simonic. With this. Well, I'm just confusing as well there, uh, Michael Richards is staying up front. And Frangic to uh, uh, Modric, sorry Mark, uh, carry on. No, I, just, I just think this is where Croatia have been brilliant, John. The way they've kept the ball under pressure has been an abject lesson to any other team. Look, play for a foul, slow the game down, push everybody out, they've been very, very good. Niko Kovac won that free kick. Slavin Bilic, he's saying stick it in the corner. He just wants to win here, he wants to win. Absolutely. And of course win the group, which they would be delighted about. That's where he wants it. We're in the last minute of extra time, of added time. Is there one last hope for Steve McLaren? If there is, it's got to come now. Lescott, headed on by Crouch, oh what a good ball that is, Modric now, Rakitic, oh and then they've got a
free kick. Beats the yard, they're screaming. Gerard. Still a chance. Lescott. Seconds left. Gerard. Everybody's gone forward for England. Away by Cernar. Rakitic. And England are out of the European Championships. Unless Andorra score against Russia in the next three minutes. England players standing, lying in disbelief. Steve McLaren shepherded it away. Croatia celebrates what for them has to be seen as a memorable victory. And Wembley is stunned. There are sounds of disbelief. There's a bit of booing. There are people standing just trying to take in what's happened. England were 2-0 down. They got back to 2-2, which was a qualification position. And then they conceded a third goal. And the substitutes and the injured players come on as Carson hangs his head. And the scene is one of desolation at Wembley. Haven't seen it quite like this since, well, probably when Germany won here back in uh, 2000. But that wasn't anything like as significant as this. Slaven Bilic, well, he's entitled to look delighted. Our studio are keeping us informed about what's happening with the Russia game because you can't take anything for granted in this group. But it would be the miracle of all miracles if Andorra scored now. They're into three minutes of injury time there. Still 1-0 to Russia. So Gus hitting within touching distance now. Mark Lawrence, you can take the pressure off me here by just well, saying a few things about this game. Well, let's, let's congratulate Croatia. I think they've done extremely well, John. But, you know, after, after the abject first-half performance by England, made the changes at half-time, got themselves back into the game at 2-2. At 2-2, it was a job done, but you just felt they'd slowly started to back away England. And then, of course, the winner came from Croatia. And I think since once a third goal got in and went in, England never really looked like scoring again. At half chance for Bent, apart from that, really too little, too late. Just before we hand back to Gary Mark, it would be irresponsible not to say that this defeat will have ramifications, yeah. uh, probably for Steve McLaren. Um, but uh, that's to be obviously decided later. And the faces tell the story here. Gary, it's unbelievably for me England 2, Croatia 3. Yes, when you're clinging to the hope that um, Andorra will equalise <laughs> against Russia, having lost all 29 of their previous uh, European qualifiers, uh, you know your country and your team are in mm. desperate trouble. Well, if you'd been brutally honest, they got what they deserved. Technically in fear, they were out-thought, um, out-played, out-fought. Um, realistically, Croatia could have won by six or seven. It's definitely a low point in, in English history because... Um, just the, the nature of the performance tonight was so much ex, at stake. Um, it was just abysmal, it really was, it was truly abysmal. you ever seen a game with so many England players <coughs> play so poorly? I haven't, to be honest. I think you can get away with one, maybe two, not playing to their potential or their maximum, maximum sorry, at this level. But I, I can only think of probably Peter Crouch tonight, who, mm. um, who was actually went out and, and played anywhere near the standard <coughs> expect of these players. Why? You can look at everything. You can look at the system. You can look at the players. Are they good enough? Uh, Ferdinand was out injured. Terry was out injured. Rooney was. Owen was. Were the players that come in to fill the uh, to fill the gap? Were they good enough? You can look at a whole host of things. But the brutal fact is, is that we didn't deserve to go through on tonight's performance. Well, there's uh, no miracle. Uh, <coughs> confirmation has just come through that uh, Russia have won in Andorra by one goal to nil. And uh, let's show you what that means for the group table. I think you all know it by now. Croatia go through as group leaders, uh, Russia sneak ahead of England and um, the England players will have the summer off. Simple as that in and it's uh, a desperately bad night for English football. Well it is, uh, when, you, when you consider, I'm desperately disappointed, um, I'm disappointed for myself, disappointed for fans, disappointed for Sean. Um, you know, when you consider the fact that we got handed a chance, it's almost like you think, gosh, what more do you need to do? Raise yourselves. 
you've got a chance now to, to get through and it was just like every single time Croatia attacked, it was like, you know, they thought they were going to score. You know, like the last goal, right. especially the third goal, you know, there was no one around him within 10 yards when he struck that. They got the lifeline, they got a soft penalty, it was a penalty, it was a soft penalty, yeah. and then they get the goal, brilliant ball in from Beckham, great goal from Crouch. Mm. And then, but you quite rightly said, you thought that England needed another one because Croatia and the break are really good, yeah. very, very England good. England was so poor defensively. Technic well, England... You know, we say at half time, the minute you come up the pitch is, is when you find out how good your back four are. Yeah. And the two centre backs were poor. The left back, Wayne Bridge, just had one. And unfortunately, the two, the big two in the middle of the park didn't play well either. Steven Gerrard, I can't believe how badly he played as well. Alan, um, the last time England lost a competitive game here at Wembley, um, Kevin Keegan resigned. Um, Steve McLaren, had, days are numbered, do you think? Probably. <coughs> I don't think he'll resign. Um, I think he'll have to be asked to leave rather than uh, <laughs> rather than resign. I think the uh, the pressure will be just unbelievable for him to uh, to stay on now. And I um, no, it wouldn't surprise me if um, if the FA were to uh, to end his term. It wasn't just the defeat; it was the manner of the defeat. Yeah, uh, they played like a t you know right from when they lost the first goal. They played like a team of strangers. And again. And a game of this magnitude, I mean, if you look at the, the Croatian team, and all right, they were, they were very good technically, and, and we said they were good in the break, but they had a system of play that everybody understood, and it's the way they play all the time. I mean, if you look at yeah. 30 games that the Croatian team have played, I bet they play like that every single time, whereas England... Chop and change. Chop and change, and, you know, English players like playing a certain way. Yeah. So and, what I couldn't... What I couldn't fathom out again is is that we got back into the game to all whether we deserve to do that or not because they still missed two or three good chances Croatia but for the for the 15 minutes to go I, I heard Mark Lawrence say what England don't need to do now is sit back yeah. and, and they've done yeah. that no, I mean, they again done, we've seen it so many times they, before they do, they've done the hard work in getting back to two all and I just thought well what, why change well, it has to get them the, further the, up the, the big the big problem is sitting back is if you sit back and you have two lines of four we've seen so many times that We've got some players. special to get quality through. Players against, but yeah. they, they were sitting back, and there was like huge gaps between the back four and the midfield three or four. Mm. And that's what happened with, with the winning goal. Okay. Nobody got tight quick enough, and it ends up in the yeah. back of the net. Well, the writing was on the wall from the early stages of the game, and a uh, horrific error from uh, Scott Carson. He made one or two uh, terrific saves late on, but um, he'll be remembered for this. Well, uh, you know, big game under extreme pressure. Again, you go back to the technique of the goalkeeper. We could make excuses mm. about the pitch, but he's got to get his whole body behind that so that if he misses it with his hands, he gets he comes back off his body. The thing with it, Al, is that fact Cranshaw's done the right thing there because, like, a new goalkeeper, slippy pitch, have a shot. This one. Well, this is the second goal. I mean, we've said before, Lescott should do better there, then Saul Campbell should go across. But then you still got enough white jerseys back there. One so ball beats on. five. And then one ball beats five, and it's in the back of the net. And then from there on, it's a long, long way back. And then, as I say, they get the lifeline with this penalty kick because I think it is a penalty kick. But yeah, well, I think he tugs it with the jersey. Here. Just I think you don't get the them very often. Do you? Just the, yeah, just there, that you just see it there. there. Yeah, he just saw it at the back there. Yeah. There was one. no need to do it because no. the keeper was going to claim I mean the, the pressure on Frank here was, was incredible give him his due he stuck it away very well and, and that got the crowd going what we said at half time it gave them something to shout about yeah. this they was right the behind. best bit of English play of the night I mean what a ball he is I mean, what, what, a, what a fantastic ball this was from uh, from David Beckham I can't tell you how difficult a ball this is it's, it's, actually, it's actually first time with a little bit of oh, swerve oh. on it and a great touch and a great finish from Crouch and for, for once, we had two or three bodies in the box that yeah. we were able to hit. This is the one now. Look how much space he's got. Look at that. Well, this is it. There's three around the bottom, but you've got to feel if, sorry if for you're the central defenders, Ian, you've got to come up. You've got well, to. It's, it's, it's part and parcel of defending. That summed, I think that goal more than any summed the England performance up tonight for me because he's come inside and we've got, we've got back to two all and there's no one within three or four yards of him who's prepared to break the neck and actually go and get hit and smack with the ball. One you always get one chance. Yeah, you always get one he just wouldn't and come down. He wouldn't come. He'd try to get it down, and he's off balance. I think he's unlucky there because he does really well. When it hit the net, we all thought. Oh, it was I thought it was in. The other, the other guys were jumping up, but um, they didn't deserve. They didn't deserve anything. The way they played. The how, how, do you, how do you sum 
That's not for England. Well, the thing... The, 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 we've been on a, yeah, it is devastating. The roller coaster ride we've been on, you'd have to say, I was nervous before. I said to you, Al, I just feel nervous. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I think that we, at the end of the day, well, I don't think we deserve to go through on what we've done in this group. And we was hoping and praying, and we got a lifeline and still threw it away. We didn't deserve to go through this time. Final thoughts, son? I'm just devastated like everyone else. I mean, when you, when you, when you get a chance, you've got to take them in football and... and I just can't believe that so many England players were how poor they were tonight. They really were. I mean, you often get one or two in a game that'll be poor, but I mean, there was ten out there tonight that were really poor. We're watching them play against three teams here where they won convincingly. Tonight they were up against a decent side and yeah. they played like a team of strangers. And when you talk about low points in English football history, this is one of them. They don't mm. get much lower than this. That's it from us on the night that England failed to qualify for Euro 2008. Good night.